Hey everyone, welcome to this video today. Today I'm going to look at something a little bit different. Um, just launched on the App Store is Sophisticate's new bridge modeler. So for those of you that know me, I love new technology and new things. So I've just downloaded a 30 day free trial and I've quickly installed it on my Revit 2019. So I'm going to not played with this before. I'm just going to have a quick look at it. It looks pretty simple. Um, I've seen the little demo video on YouTube. It looks pretty awesome, pretty amazing. So I assume it runs probably left to right on the ribbon. So I'm going to start with creating an axis. I assume this will create the alignment um, for the, the corridor. So I'm going to click create. And let's see what pops up. So obviously whirling away, probably installing files. So I can see that this is going to create the alignment. Um, there it is here. And I've got the horizontal axis position. And yeah, as expected, as I click each of the different types, I can control the variables between each. And you can see I can start the, the first segment and that's 30 meters and 60. And I can specify the radius values. So that's pretty cool. I guess I can change the position and that will obviously change the position of the first axis data. And then under the vertical, I can go in, set the station, set the height, and go in and obviously change the position X, Y, and Z of the support axis. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave it pretty sound. There is a little bit of a curve, but I'm not expecting nothing too big. and I've got some variables which I can build in and then also a secondary curve. So I'm going to leave, so I can just click, I assume I can add a secondary curve. So I could add in two, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple for this process. Let's click OK and view this in 3D. And there we have my axis defined. You see a little curve and I've got four definition points. So let's go and create the superstructure. So again, each of these are create, edit, disconnect, import, export, create, edit, disconnect. So if I go create, select the axis, pretty simple. And that I assume is going to create my superstructure. So, okay, this has popped up and as suspected, we will choose a profile family to define the superstructure. Let's select the drop down. You can see lots of default come so if we actually let's run with the hollow sections that's going to have the hollow section in here again i seem to be able to change the values for the width and height okay so i'm going to again leave them pretty okay and then create it from so the different axis and again i can say that i've got a material so again um what would we choose have we got concrete so let's say we go with the cast in place and let's click OK. And you can see the little sophisticated task execution is running and it's processing the data, generating the geometry. And now it's going to create the elements. OK, that is pretty cool, pretty quick as well. So that has created the superstructure and it's based upon obviously my axis there. Again, that would take an age. I'd usually have to import civil 3 data or extrude along using model in place. If we look at the substructure, again, I can click create, select my axis. So the system is pretty simple. You seem to define your axis and then the axis is defining all the geometry thereafter. So the substructure family, um, I don't think it's that. Let's select this drop down and okay, there I have some um, generic peer again these will be custom families which we could drop out if we let's say go with we'll go with something we'll go with a generic what have we got we've got an abutment detail generic bearing uh, let's go with a generic peer three yeah that's pretty good and again we seem to have values which we can change and update and then we can create on placement and you can see you've got the four points one two three and four so if we say actually don't create them on p and three just create them one and two let's click okay okay that was pretty quick if we go substructure let's go create again select my axis 
and let's choose the abutment detail and not on one and two click OK okay that's pretty cool you can see what's starting up again that's probably not the best one that I should use so I will create it again again select my axis let's go with the generic peer what we go with let's do let's do the columns um not on two and one click okay okay that is pretty cool the way that is working then we have um some parapet details so again it says to select the profile so again i've got different parapet profiles so we say we've got something like that vertical let's select okay it's asking me to select an edge so i select the edge of the alignment there okay that's pretty cool let's try another parapet this side let's go with that profile select that edge Okay, again, pretty cool, pretty quick, and that is obviously aligning the whole way along. We can do railing. So let's select that. I assume it's going to select, select an edge that it's looking for. So we've got the placement controls. We've got some layout rules for spacing, some pretty standard Revit stuff. We can specify the spacing, the panel. Um, if we let's orbit this around, have a look. That is a pretty standard panel, and then we've got a railing panel. Let's have a quick look at that. Okay, that's the one I've seen in the video where it's got the, the base post with the anchorage. So again, that height is fine. I've got some end post options, so I'm gonna click okay to that. And it's looking for an edge, so I'm gonna select the edge of that parapet. And it processes, obviously it's doing quite a lot, I imagine, in terms of the post. You can see it is generating down the bottom. This element does seem a little bit slow, but I imagine it's doing lots of information and generating lots of of parameters. So some things like this do take a little bit of time to given the complexity. So because it's automated, I wouldn't worry too much. I'm just hoping it, it goes pretty quick. And there we have it. a little bit of time, but you can see that it seems to have generated the full railing the whole way along. And you can see it's got that. I assume I can select it, yeah, and then just change its family type. So that overall, in a matter of minutes, is really quick and seems to be really powerful. Let's look at the shop drawing side of things. So this tells us that it allows me to select an axis. And this will produce drawings, I assume, at each of these points. Um, so it's clicking the point. I can click create between points, which is pretty cool. So let's say we space them as well between the points. Click OK. And let's see what happens.
So this, I assume, is creating a view at each of the points. So uh, elevation view at each of the points. It saves me creating my section tools in, in Revit. Again, I have used similar add-ons where they generate drawings, and they do take a little bit of time if you consider the amount of work that this is doing. So this should, I think, create seven, eight elevations from it. So that seems to have added in some sections. Wow. So this has created lots of sections. I think I said the increment was 250. So let's have a look at the first one. Wow, that is pretty impressive. So that has created, dimensioned all the main points. And if that corridor changed, obviously the sections we've got. Let's go back and look at the 3D again. So if I want to do a longitudinal view, I can click it, select my axis, select the point on elevation. So I want to create the elevation in direction I can create okay so I'll include grids I can create the current consider stations I can also pull some pretty cool options for a far clip and let's click OK Cool, so that has generated an elevation. Overall, that looks pretty impressive. Let's go back and look at this. So we've looked at the axis, the superstructure, substructure, parapets and railings, automation of views and drawings. I seem to have an option here to import, export, got some help, open a project folder, and then I've got obviously some standard, sophisticated, standard licensing, so that looks like a really cool addition into Revit. It's going to save a lot of people a lot of time in their modeling. So yeah, join me again soon for another look at some interesting structural BIM.